Consideration Psalms 135, verse 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. 
For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that God is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. I have read for you Psalms 135, verses 1 through 6. Shall we pray? Dear most holy and righteous God. Once again, I come to you in an ominous manner that I know how. Just to lift up your holy name. And Father, just thank you for allowing us to see a day that we will never see again. Because you are God and God all by yourself. Father, I pray for those who are under the sound of my weak voice, whether they're on Facebook, whether they're on Zooms, or any other electronic device. Father, you have been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father, we should just praise your holy name. Because today we bless one more time just to be in your holy house. Just to say thank you for all that you have done. You didn't have to do it, but you woke us up last night. While danger was lurking all around us, you kept us, my father. You dispatched your angels to keep us so that when it was time for you to touch us to see another day, you chose this day. And I want to say thank you because you've been so good to us. Father, we may not praise you when we should praise you, but I want to take the time today just to say, God, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you have done. You bought us from trials and tribulations and hurricanes and storms, my father. And somebody said to me the other day, how can you believe? I say, just look at me. I've been sick and couldn't get well. But my God delivered me. When the doctors told me I couldn't be here but 10 more years, look at me now. I'm 62 years old. Thank you, my father. It was nobody but the blood of your son who ran down the hill of Calvary today. I want to say thank you. And if you're going through some things, don't give Satan the glory. Tell God, thank you. If you don't have money in your pocket, tell God, thank you. If you can't pay your bills, tell God, thank you. If you're sick, and you can't get away from Tell God, thank you. Praise his name in the midst of your storms. Praise his name when you're going through sorrows. Praise his name when your family don't want to do nothing with you. Because God is able. I'm standing here today to say thank you, my father. Because you didn't have to do it. Thank you, my father, for wiping the tears out of my eyes. One day I woke up, my father. When I went to bed, I could see out of two eyes. And one day when I woke up, I could only see out of one eye. But I want to thank you for that one eye. Because you didn't have to do it. You did, could have, I could have woke up and couldn't see it all. But I serve a God that has all power. I serve a God that can lift you up when you're down. I serve a God that can turn you around. When you're going down the wrong path. I remember. Some of the things that God brought me through. Thank you my father. If you only knew my story. You would say thank you my father. Because if you can do it for a rich like him. I know you can do it for a rich like me. Thank you son. In the mighty name of your darling son, Jesus. He's been so good. And Father, I want to say before I close this prayer. 
I just want to thank you for the leader of this church. I want to thank you for giving us a man that loves you. I want to thank you for giving us a man that set an example for you. I want to thank you for giving us a man that takes his time out to teach your people for you. He could be doing many things, my father. Oh, father. Father, thank you for Pastor Miller. Thank you for his family. Because I realize we take a lot of his time away from them. Get them what they need to support him, my father. And give those who support Pastor Miller what they need to keep on supporting him, encouraging him, and telling him how much we love him. Thank you, my father. You've been so good. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen.
Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's once again that we come to you in the most humble way that we know how. Lord, we come to you this morning asking that you will forgive us of our sins. Lord, if we've said something unkind to somebody, please forgive us. If we've made judgment on someone, please forgive us. Lord, we, we just, we're filthy rags in your sight. And we don't deserve your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for putting up with us, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have yet another day. Giving us another opportunity to get it right. Giving us another opportunity to tell somebody about your love, your mercy, your kindness. Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for us. If we've got food on our tables, you gave it to us. If we've got money in our pockets, you gave it to us. If we've got shelter from the storm, you provided it. Lord, I was up the other night because there were storms in the area. And the storms woke me up about three times that night. But each time I woke up, I found everything all right. <laughs> the shelter that you provided for me protected me and my family from the storm. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Lord, as we travel to and fro up and down these dangerous highways, you continue to protect us. You continue to guide us. Continue to go with us each and every step of the way, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I'm asking a special prayer for the sick and shut in. I don't know them all, dear Lord, but praying for Sister, Sister Ward, praying for Brother Flores. You know who they are, dear Lord. We ask that you will touch them right now and give them what they need. Strengthen them where they may be weak. Lord, less than 20 minutes ago, I received a phone call from my sister. She told me, dear Lord, that my brother had a heart attack. He's in the hospital, dear Lord, and the doctors don't expect him to live. But, oh, Lord, we know who's in control. We're asking you right now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, if it be your will to bless my brother, give him, dear Lord, another day. Lord, whatever your will, we know you're in control. We're going to continue, dear Lord, to serve you regardless of the situation because we love you, dear Lord, and we, we just want to say thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you will bless everybody in this congregation.
bless everybody who's listening to us on social media feeds. Thank them, dear Lord, for having the mind and the spirit to tune in this morning to receive a word from you. Bless them, dear Lord. Bless us individually and collectively. Continue to go with us and stand by us. Now, Lord, we ask that you will bless the leader here of this congregation, this flock. Bless our pastor, Pastor Miller. Continue to go with him. Continue to guide him. Continue to strengthen him. Continue to give him what he needs that he may give it to us. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. How we love you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, when we can go no further, when our time is up, we ask dear Lord that you will give us a home in your kingdom. These are other blessings we ask in the precious, precious, precious holy name all right, all right. of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Our responsive reading. God delivers when we call on him. Amen. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my helper, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and my refrain, my helper. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemy. The sorrows of, of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. Therefore, I will give thanks unto the Lord among the heathens and sing praises unto his name. Great deliverance giveth he to the king and showeth mercy unto his anointed, to David and to his seed forever. God bless the readers. And this has been our responsive reading.
pandemic, through COVID, working from home, everything you're going through, just know it's necessary. Oh, it's necessary. It was 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 necessary. Oh, it's necessary. It was. If you 
you said it, believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it.
love you. I love you. I love God we serve. Well, thank God for our singers on the day. Come on, let's, let's give it up for our singers. Thank God for our Brother Proctor and Brother Fisher. One of those powerful, powerful prayers. Let's continue to pray for Brother Anthony Darrell Fisher. Reverend Jack, who was responsible for doing the responsive reading today. And to all of you that are here, all of God's children. 
What an awesome God. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. What an awesome God we serve. God is, is so good to us. such a special way. Yes. <laughs> 
filled with praise. I can't stop praising the Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Thirteenth number of this song. There we will find the word of God today. Psalm thirteen. Verses three and four. Well, last week we dealt with Verses 1 and 2. This week we want to deal with verses 3 and verse 4. It read like this. Consider and hear me. O Lord, my Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me, rejoice when I'm moved. I, I want to talk about today a mind change. A mind change. There is a slogan says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And a bad mindset is just as bad as no mind at all. A mind that that piece of our body that God has sculptured in such a way that he places thinking in the mind. God has set it up so that he says in his words, so as a man think it in his heart which informs us that our mind and our heart has a parallel correlation. And to hear David, who has wondered how to overcome despair, despondency, while waiting in God's waiting room comes to the realization that his prayer needed a mind change. And if we have ever needed the Lord before, We sure do need him now. Our minds must be focused on him more than ever before in life. And no matter the age group, all of us need the Lord 
more than ever. When we had a president, number 45, who did not seem to care about our lives, but he thought life in the White House was a gigantic reality show. Now with a governor who wants to play Russian roulette with our lives because of financial gain, all of us need the Lord to shine his face upon us. Remember David is praying for God's intervening grace. David has sent up an emergency prayer. And somebody in this room that's not too ashamed to let others know that you had to send up an emergency prayer. And that in the need of an emergency prayer, we expect an emergency answer. I wish I had somebody talk back to me. And, 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 and David has sent up an emergency prayer. And God has not answered at all. Anybody been there other than me? That, that even just yesterday, I sent up an emergency prayer. And it seemed as if God did not answer. But because of my mind change, I want to go ahead and encourage somebody, even though he did not answer, I know he heard me. And somebody today ought to go ahead and shout because you know God heard your prayer even if he haven't answered yet. I need about 30 people on Zoom to go ahead and wave at me that you know that you called on his name, that you sent up an emergency prayer. And even though he has not answered yet, you know he heard you the first time. I need some Facebook fam and some Instagram fam that's not too mean to go ahead and place it in your feed today that you called on him. He did not answer you, but you stuck with him because you know that he heard you. And may I drop a line right here and remind us that God hears us even though he does not move by our time refrains. God does not work by our time. But whenever he answers, he's on time. David's prayer is not the prayer that he may not come when you want him. But this timber that, that David is sending is a prayer for God's answer now. And I'm looking in the face of some young folk and some middle aged and some old folk. And it will have to admit to yourselves that when you were all by yourself, that at some point in time, you called on God in prayer and you needed him in a 911 moment. And can I tell you, then I want to go ahead and shout back to David to tell you, David, even though he didn't answer you right then, this time, we can go on record to admit that God have answered some of our prayers while we were yet praying. And that lets me know that David is trying to see and to understand how to overcome despair while he's in God's waiting room of life. 
when we are in despair, when we're in God's waiting room, when we are praying for God's intervening grace, when we, like David, think that God has turned his face from us, we think God has turned his back on us, be very sure that is not you and I that have turned our face away from God. Because I come out to tell you that God does not turn his face from the faithful believer who trusts him, who believes in him, who calls on him. And can I tell you, sometimes we ought to call on God, yeah, when everything is going well. And not just call him when we're in trouble. Let's not take God's grace for granted. Because can I go ahead and tell you something? God's grace always goes before God's peace. And if we take God's grace for granted, we may not ever have peace. But, but David, David informs us, David lets us know that he desperately needed the Lord's help. Somebody today can admit that you need the Lord's help right now. And if, the, if you need God's help, you can wave your hands at me. If you need God's help, you can put some hands in your chat, in your feet, and let me know that God has been good to you. And even though he's been good to you, we still need God's help. I come out to tell you, from the pulpit to the parking lot, all of us need God's help. Stand at this podium this morning and declare a word. I know I'm in the Lord's strength. Because when my body is weak, God can undergird you and strengthen you to give you a voice to speak to his people. I come out and tell you, you can shout when you call on him and you need his help. And God knows when you need him the most. But watch, watch, watch what David says. Watch what David says. David, David changes his, his mindset. On last week, David was asking, how long? How long will you forget me? How long, Lord, is it forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? But David realizes now that he's been praying the wrong prayer. And I want to go ahead and tell somebody maybe God is not answering us because we've been praying the wrong prayer. In those first two verses, it appears that David is trying to overcome despair with a prayer of a pity party. And he started asking, how long? But I want us to go ahead and remember that David stopped asking how long and start begging for God's attention. And I come out and tell you, sometimes we ought to not ask the Lord, why me, Lord? Lord, why is everything happening to me? Lord, how long will my body suffer and it seems as if there's no cure. Sometimes we get tired of being sick. Sometimes we get tired of not having a job. Sometimes we get tired of not being secure with who we are. God tells us by way of David, stop falling in your own chosen sorrow. And start asking the Lord for some assistance. Instead of asking the Lord, why me, Lord? Somebody ought to say, Lord, why not me? And tell me what you want, want me to do. And that's the focus point right there. That David begins to ask for the Lord's attention. And he asks for the Lord's assistance. And first, the first thing David, David asked the Lord is, look at me. That word consider in verse number three takes on the connotation of the word Nabat. And that word Nabat means 
And David is saying, Lord, look, look at me. Don't just merely notice me. But Lord, I need you to put your eyes on me. And I know somebody that's in the house today that no matter what you're going through, that you need the Lord to put his eyes on you. And let me tell you how good it is. It's all right when we have our eyes on the Lord. But I feel so much better when the Lord has his eyes on me. Is there anybody in here other than me that, that you want the Lord to have his eyes on you? But watch this. I looked at that word in the back. And it says David is asking God to intently look at him. That I want you to absorb every detail of not only my face, but I want you to observe the details of my situation. And you do know that our faces can tell the story. I never will forget. In the room with Pastor Robinson, my sweet loved one, who I love so dearly, Sister Ciola Page. Walked in the study and her face wasn't looking right. And Pastor Robinson halted the conversation, Brother Proctor, between him and myself. And he said, Ciola, what's wrong with you? She said, Pastor, Pastor Robinson, nothing is wrong. He said, No, there's something wrong with you. She said, no, Pastor, there's nothing wrong. He said, well, turn around and let me see your face. And when he looked in her face, he said, no, you might as well tell me. Because something is really weighing on your heart. Can I tell you, he didn't have a tethoscope to check her heartbeat. No. Did he have a thermometer to check her temperature? He didn't have to use no hand sanitizer to get her clean and white as snow. But he looked at her face. And her face told the story. Can I tell you, David said, Lord, if you look at my face, you'll understand that I need you to really look at me. Because I'm about to throw in the towel. This is the same word. Consider that he told Abraham. He said, consider looking into the heavens and count the stars. Which means to look intently and make sure you find out every detail of what my face is trying to tell you. That I'm no longer asking how long. But I need to connect desperately with you, Lord. That I need you to, to really look in my face. Because if you look in my face, you will see that I really believe that I'm about to die. Somebody in this room today, you felt that way. That you thought that it was all over. Or that you realized that you had a disconnect from the Lord. A couple of weeks ago, we were here for, I believe, Wednesday Night Live. And they got the skirmish around because we could not set up Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Brother Mitchell, we could not set it up because there was no connectivity to the Internet. There was a disconnect. But thank God that he had another element called an air card. That even though we felt disconnected, we had an air card that was able to connect. God serves as our spiritual air card. That every time we feel disconnected, God is right there. To put us back again. Is there anybody that felt disconnected from the Lord? And you know it was nobody but the Lord that gave you your connectivity back. That I come out and tell you, 
even some of us that's been in church 30 and 40 years have still felt a disconnect from God. And we start living the ways of the world because of our disconnect. But not only did David tell the Lord to look at him, but David also asked the Lord to hear him. It's right there in the text. It says, consider and hear me. That word hear me means, Lord, I know I have not always listened to you. But I need you right now. And in the midst of all of my rascalities, I need you right now. I need you so much, Lord, that I need you not only to listen to me, but I need you to do something for me. I need a little bit of encouragement. And that ought to be a word to somebody today that in the midst of your young lives, in your 20s and your 30s, that you need to be connected with the Lord. That you come to church, you sing songs, you read scriptures, but you need some connectivity. And you want the Lord to intervene to give you that which you don't have. That your lives may be full. And I like talking to young folk. That's in their 20s. Because they like to say, but you're an old man. You suppose to trust God. Well, I come out and tell you, I may be an old man now. But when I started this journey, I was just as young as you. I've been preaching for 30 years. Which means I was in my twisting 20s. And the Lord has still been good to me. And the closer I get to him, the more he answers my prayers. And now I don't mind calling on him. Because when I ask him to look at me, to consider me and hear me, I got to tell you, the Lord has come through every time. And I need about ten more witnesses, even five in the house today, that don't mind lifting up your holy hands and tell me that when you've been weak, you found out that God will make you strong. And when you've been down, the Lord has brought you in. And when you've been down, he brought you up. And when you've been down, he surely brought us through. I feel pretty good right now. That the Lord has looked upon me. And now David says, I'm not calling on anybody. I'm calling on a special somebody. And that's why I don't like this song. That says I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. Because when you are a child of the king, you are already somebody. I'm never a nobody. No matter how disconnected from the Lord I am, I'm still somebody. Because of whose I am. And I heard David say, Lord, he beseeched him to enlighten or to give him light to his darkened eyes. And sometimes we can be blind with our eyes wide open. That we take God's grace for granted. We know about his grace. We talk about his grace. We read about his grace. But we don't want to live in his grace. Because when you want to live in God's grace, we start living where God can get the glory. And I'm on my way to my seat, but I got to tell you that David didn't leave it right there. As his mind shifts from how do I overcome despair to now having a mindset shift and having a mind change. David now asks for the light of God's understanding and enlightenment about his situation. Sometimes, Sister Miller, and when we're going through rough times, we want to just sit and talk to the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, enlighten me about my own situation. Anybody been there? 
as you've been going through something and you and the Lord had a conversation and you asked the Lord, Lord, now I don't want to ask you why me. I don't want to ask you to deliver me right now. I just need to know why I'm going through this situation. What are you trying to teach me? How can I become stronger in my situation? I need to talk to somebody that you've been sick a long time. And it seems as if the Lord has turned his back on you. I heard Brother Proctor pray the time before. And he prayed about how sick he has been all his life. How the doctors and others had given up on him. But now he says all he do is send praises to the Lord. I don't know about you, but Brother Proctor, I can share that same story. That I've been sick as sick can be. But it was the Lord that was taking care of me. And I realized in my sickness, the Lord was healing my mind. I realized in my sickness, the Lord was healing my body. I realized in my mind, the Lord was right there all the time. And I need to talk to somebody that you're struggling with a job. And you're struggling with college. You're struggling with tiptoe anticipation of bad decisions. But I dare you to pray and call on the name of the Lord and trust in him and not in your own self. Because when you trust in yourself, you make bad decisions. But when you call on the Lord and trust in the light of his strength, the Lord will tell you. I got you in my holy presence that if you trust in me I can give you what you need David says to us not only do I want you to look at me not only do I want you to hear what I'm saying but I gotta tell you Lord it seems as if when I'm going through my struggles, the enemy seems to rejoice in whatever I'm going through. The Lord is not only about me, but it's also about you. Because, Lord, I know I have peace, peace from within. But I also need protection to be all around me. And I need somebody that don't mind putting it in your chat. Don't mind putting it in your IM. Don't mind placing it in your DM. That you trust the Lord with all of your heart. And while you were weak, the Lord was always strong. And when you call on the Lord, he gave you the protection that was all around you. And that's why I love the 23rd number of Psalm when it say, yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, that the Lord told me to tell you, he was right there with him when he started the 23rd number of Psalm. Set up preparation because the first thing he said is the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want that is a setup for tough situations because when I'm going through my valley experiences I still have to remember that the Lord is my shepherd when I'm going through sickness and pain when I'm going through uh, heavy heart and strain uh, the Lord still is uh, my shepherd uh, and since he's my 
my shepherd. I have everything I need. Is there anybody here today that know the Lord will give you everything you need? But I like I end up the twenty-third number psalm. He said, "Grace and mercy." I come to tell you, you can't have mercy without getting grace. You can't have peace without getting grace. And when we pray, we're asking for God's grace. David said, it seemed like my enemies are rejoicing. It seemed like my enemies are laughing at me. But God, I want you to know my enemies are talking good talk. Don't worry about those who are living the life of luck. Living the life of lust. Living the life of the world. You hold on to God's unchanging hand. And God will, God will, God will, yes he will. He said the enemies, they're laughing at me. They seem to prevail against me. And those who get me in trouble are still laughing. Those who pull me down are still having fun. Those who trouble my situation are still grinning. But Lord, they rejoice if I'm moved. But Lord, I know it's you. And because it's you, I know it's all right. I come by to tell you, David says, since I've been enlightened, since I've been strengthened, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. And all right, I got to leave you now and go to my seat. I'll tell you a difference between David's mind in verses one and two, then three and four. David's mind and his body have gotten weary, easy to be all discouraged. I come to tell you, when you get discouraged, when you get despondent, when you're in despair, God will show up right on time. Is there anybody here that know that David realized his enemies could not defeat him in God's strength? Your enemies can defeat us in our own strength, but I turned it over to the Lord and in his strength I can walk with my head up in his strength I know I'm victorious in his strength sickness have to flee in his strength money will come just enough to pay my bills in his strength I can shout for joy in his strength I can call on him and look my enemy square in the face and tell him the Lord keeps on blessing me in his strength is there anybody here that's living in the strength of the Lord Almighty anybody here that don't mind putting it down in your feet uh, that the Lord's strength has carried you through uh, I wish I had somebody that you've been walking in the Lord's strength uh, and when you first start walking you walk with a limp uh, a spiritual limp uh, but you kept on calling on the name of the Lord and then you start walking or uh, look straight up uh, but your head was hung down but you kept on calling on the name of the Lord and when you call on him and ask for assistance when you call on him 
and ask them to answer you when you call on him and ask them to see about you you start picking up your head when you picked up your head you were like David no longer am I in chosen sorrow but I choose to live in chosen joy 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 ah, joy and I, I gotta leave you now but like David David says we should seek uh, the Lord's help uh, so we'll not fall and give the enemy the opportunity to mark our God. I'm going to live uh, so the enemy can't use me uh, to mark our God. I'm going to walk uh, so the Lord can use me uh, so the enemy uh, can mark our God. Uh, I've come to tell you, for though uh, we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh I say then walk in the spirit and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh I gotta go now I gotta weave my mind but finally my brother in Paul says be strong in the Lord is there anybody here that's just strong in the Lord? If you're strong in the Lord, you ought to shout one time. If you're strong in the Lord, you ought to wave one time. If you're strong in the Lord, you ought to jump one time. If you're strong in the Lord, you can lift up holy hand. If you're strong in the Lord, I come to tell you, David said, take a good look at me. I want you to let me look life right in the eyes so no enemy can get the best of me. I come by to tell you, the Lord in our youthfulness got the best of us. And now the Lord will bless the rest of us. I come to tell you, he did it. Didn't he do it? He said, I never leave you nor forsake you and when he tells us this it lets me know that God will not ever turn his back on you and me trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to our own understanding in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall yes he will direct town path God is so much God he's God all by himself and he's so much God that he gave his son you know him don't you he gave us Jesus Jesus anybody know him Jesus anybody believe in him Jesus Mary's baby Jesus the carpenter's son Jesus, my way in. Jesus, my way through. Jesus, my way over. Jesus, my way under. Jesus, my elder brother. Jesus, the king of righteousness. Jesus, the king of the Jews. Jesus, the Lord of Lords. Jesus, the seed of a woman. Jesus, the horn of salvation. Jesus, the prince of peace. Jesus, Matthew's king. Jesus, Mark's up for servant. Jesus, Luke's great physician. Jesus, John Word made flesh. Jesus, Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, he died. Jesus, he died. Did he die? He was buried. But right early, right early, with all power. 
in his hand. He rose, didn't he rise? Is there anybody here who loves my Jesus? If you love him, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Somebody need a mind change today. That's you know. So you no longer feel sorry for yourself. you have a mind change that David had to realize that God does not work on his time frame. God works on his own time frame. And when the mindset shifts, and you ask God, what is your purpose? What is your destiny? If you run, In the way God will have you to run. God will see you through. Can I tell you something? Sometimes God does not answer. But he works it out behind the scenes. This is our invitation period. And I want to invite you. be a part of the Mount Hebron Church. If you're on our Zoom location, you can place it in your chat that you want to be a member of the Mount Hebron Church. If you're on our Facebook location, put it in your comments or in your message box and let me thank Sister Carter for joining. Thank you for joining last week. Facebook. 
Thank you for talking with me, for me to accept you in on Zoom. We're here for you, and we're here for the other ten. Instagram, place it in your IM, your DM rather, put it in your DM that you want to join today. We'll be glad to have you. If you're at our YouTube location, or if you're not electronically inclined, are you technologically challenged? We ask that you would dial this number. 713. 7-3-3. Nine one seven zero seven one three seven three three nine one seven zero. If you're without a church home, you're spiritually homeless. You really don't have a place to be buried in. Some people may not have ever been baptized. We will worry about the water later. I want to take you in the church. Come on now. Please come while you have time. God is already saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. For when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, no man knows the day nor the hour. It will be too late to get ready, for we shall already be ready. Change our mindset. Not I'm going to wait till I get old, but I'm going to get a part of it now while I'm getting old. This is our invitation to you. It's totally up to you to accept or reject. May God bless you. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap, please. for our giving now. Those of you that that are waiting on this offertory period to, to bring your tithes and your offerings. We ask that you would do so now. Those of you that will be on Giving the Fire, we ask that you will go ahead and go to the Giving the Fire, Mount Hebrew Missionary Baptist Church, Houston, Texas, and 
Go ahead and do your giving there. Let me thank those that have already, all week long, been giving for this upcoming Sunday, which is today. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And I want to thank those that are going the extra mile. Those of you that will be using our cash out. It's dollar sign. M-O-U-N-T. T-H-E-M-O-U-N-T. 7817 dollar sign T-H-E-M-O-U-N-T 7817 and let me say this to you you're never too young or too old to tithe because your blessings are attached to your tithing Somebody may be saying, well, I got a brand new job, I got a brand new car, brand new house, and I haven't been tithing. Oh, how great the fall will be when you get built up on what you have and it's not tied to God's blessings. Lord, how we thank you for, for those that are giving right now those that have given how we thank you for those that had the mindset to give Lord I no longer say bless those who gave and those who couldn't give because everybody can give something So, Lord, touch the hearts of those that are not giving. That they will trust you with whatever they have. That not only do you give it back financially, but sometimes you give it back spiritually. We ask you to take what we have given us And you utilize it and stir the pot. That it won't just be enough. But that it's abundantly over enough. That you will get the glory. We'll continue to tell the story. Of how you have blessed us. In the matchless, masterful, magnanimous name of Jesus. And for his sake. Amen. Come on, those of you that's on our social media feeds, if you've been helped by the message today, you ought to put some hand claps in your feed. You can go ahead and place it in your chat, your IM and your DM, and put them clapping hands in there, those praising hands in there. And then go right back and let me know that you know that the Lord has changed your mindset, that you no longer think like you used to think. You no longer act like you used to. And that we don't get no self-aggrandizement. That Lord God Almighty gets all of the glory for the mindset change. If this message has helped you in any way, if the singing that has been done, if the prayers that have been prayed has helped you and you've been helped, we ask you to place it in your feed. And if you're visiting with us and you would like to leave a donation, we ask that you would utilize one of those different types that we ask. If you're mailing it in, you mail it to the Mount Hebron Church, 7817 Calhoun Road, Houston, Texas, 77033. If you're a visitor and you want to use Givelify, you can do so. If you want to use Facebook to give in this period, 
for such a season as this. We thank God for you and for all that you've done. One more time, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Just, just one more time. Amen. Let's continue to pray for one another. Again, let's send our extended prayers to the Fisher family. Uh, let's pray for Reverend Michael Walker who's been in the hospital for a while and both of his legs have been amputated. So let's pray for him. Let's pray for his spirit. Let's pray for his mindset. Let's continue to pray for Sister Helen Ward who has just come through surgery and she's on with us today. Let us continue to pray for Sister Sinceria Allen, who's staring chemo right in the face and still has a smile on her face. Let's continue to pray for Sister Ruby Sadler, who will be scheduled for surgery next month. And let's wish Sister Lola Houston I believe a 91st birthday on the day. Amen. 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 Sister Houston, we let her come one Sunday. And she had to can't keep still. We try to place you in the seat so we'll know where the pastor going to sanitize when y'all leave. But when Sister Houston came, I had to sanitize the whole church. She couldn't be still. She was over here. They told her to sit there. She moved back there. Told her to sit there. She moved over here. We saw her over here. We saw her back up here. So we want to thank her that the Lord is still giving her the activity of her limbs. And then to you, Mount Hebron, I want to thank you for all of your prayers for your pastor. I got a lot of texts this morning. I guess since I wasn't on Sunday school, Many of you all thought I was sick or something. Uh, but the Lord is able. And I know he's able. He's a good God. He's a powerful God. He's a prophetic God. He's an ever-present God. Let's go, y'all. Brother Hill, you and Brother Moshe, Brother Baptiste, next Sunday, I'm going to do something that I haven't done in over a year and a half. I'm going to preach at a church, but I'm not taking the church. I'm going to take about six or seven people to sing. So uh, I'll get a team together, Brother Kirby. Do what you need to do. So I'm not going to have to have you here that morning, but I'm going to get you the address. And I need you to meet me there. Brother Kirby is my, 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 uh, where, I, where that other one is? Oh, he's my other son. I got one upstairs. I don't want to mess up. I got one upstairs, and he got his hands like this. That's my other son, but he's also my bodyguard. When I get him and Brother Thomas with me, I got some young bodyguards. So I'm going to have one of your deacons to go with me as well. Uh, Brother Proctor, our Brother Fisher, I need one of y'all to be there with me. Uh, I don't know how their social media is yet. We'll find out Tuesday. And I know which one if I need both or one of y'all. Let's get out of here. Young folk, I thank you. My niece and my nephew, I thank y'all. My daughter in the back, I thank you. And 
I don't know what this one is. I don't know if that's my cousin, my niece, my daughter. That's, that's little Riri. I had two Riri's back then. And then my daughter and my, that little cousin of mine that just stole my heart. I love you. I love you. God, how we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for these that came. Bless those on every location that we have. God, you will continue to get to glory. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the power you've given us. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost rest with each of us. In the name of Jesus and for his sake. Come on, help me close it out. Thank you all, baby. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much.